So Bart, you recently uh, wrote a book about big, uh, big data and analytic analytics. Uh, so why did you write that book in the first place? Well, actually, I wanted to write a book which is relevant to decisions that all businesses will need to make in the upcoming years. Because as the number of practical applications for data skyrockets, learning how to extract business value from big data becomes a real competitive requirement. Big data, to me, are assets that can be leveraged quickly and inexpensively if tackled wisely. In my book, Analytics in a Big Data World, I address this seemingly Herculean task of coming to grips with multiple channels of data and sculpting them into quantifiable value. This book is for business professionals who want a focused, practical approach to big data and analytics. I hereby especially focus on case studies, real-world applications, and steps for implementations using only theory and mathematical formulas when strictly necessary. Well, in marketing analytics, there are a couple of very important trends. First of all, there's the trend towards actionable analytics. At the end of the day, the analytics should give you new insights into your key business which allow you to develop new marketing campaigns to target your customers in innovative ways. So it's not about only estimating complex predictive models, but it's actually about putting them to use. The trend towards actionable analytics is very important. And if you want to put something to use, if you want to make it actionable, the first key requirement is that it should be simple. It should be understandable. It should be comprehensible, especially to the various stakeholders involved. And here I'm talking about the business users, I'm talking about the campaign managers, the marketing analysts. So analytics should be made actionable and simple, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. Very important trend is about data quality, right? Because if you want to do analytics, you need data. Data is the key ingredient to any analytical model, and it should be of utmost quality. And that's something very important. Another trend that I would like to discuss is that it's not only about building predictive models, but it's also about successfully monitoring and backtesting them. Because especially in marketing uh, analytics, customer uh, behavior is dynamic. It changes on an ongoing basis. Customers are going to respond to marketing campaigns for various reasons. They are going to churn. They're going to leave your uh, firm for various reasons. So it's also very important that you continuously monitor your analytical models, that you continuously backtest them by contrasting your predictions with observed reality. Mm -hmm. There's a very important relationship there because currently, if you ask me, there's a huge gap between analytics and business users. And in order to fully leverage the power of analytics, two things are important. First, education of business users, and secondly, visualization. Without proper visualization tools, analytical projects are doomed to fail. And although visual analytics and visualization has been very popular during data preprocessing, we now also see it gaining in importance during post-processing. Mm -hmm. And when I say visualization, I basically refer to visualization of the analytical model itself, as well as the various accompanying reports needed for model monitoring, benchmarking, and backtesting, which we already referred to earlier on. For example, if you look at model representation, very popular visualization mechanisms there are decision trees, which are comprehensible white box models, or traffic light indicator approaches. Mm -hmm. Think about, for example, uh, segmenting your customers into various groups and whereby you're going to represent the groups as traffic lights. Green uh, customers mean high potential customers, red customers mean low potential customers, and then um, yellow or orange customers mean customers that are situated in between. Yeah. So by visualizing this as traffic lights, we kind of try to bridge the gap towards the business user. Well, it has in many ways an impact on the daily decisions that you're going to make. Just think about the impact of recommender systems, for example. When you want to buy a product or service from an online retailer, say Amazon, for example, you're often frustrated because of the many choices and configurations possible. 
thanks to an intelligent analytical recommender system, purchases and customer feedback are continuously monitored so as to better tailor future recommendations to customers, hereby efficiently assisting you and other customers in your product search. So recommender systems can be very helpful to customers. Another example is um, a credit card fraud detection system. I myself, for example, I had one case where a credit card transaction was blocked because of an analytical application based on neural networks, by the way. And the analytical application fortunately detected that somebody else had stolen my credit card credentials and was making purchases with it. Finally, also credit risk analytics is very important. Everyone amongst us is being daily scored by powerful credit risk models. And the purpose there is to protect the savings depositors, in other words, as, as uh, savings depositors. So it's going to make sure that our savings money is well protected. Given the events that we have witnessed on the credit markets in 2008 and afterwards, this is now more relevant than ever before, if you ask me. Okay. There's a, there's a huge need for analytics people in the industry right now, right? And when I say analytics people, I refer to job profiles such as data scientists, analysts, data miners, etc. There's a huge need for it. Um, I currently teach a couple of courses in the area. Let me first briefly uh, discuss some of the courses. I teach one course on credit risk analytics. I teach one course on analytics, putting it all to work. work. And I teach another, another two courses, one on advanced analytics, and I'm currently developing one on fraud analytics. And the reason that I teach so many courses currently is because of the strong need that I observe for this kind of expertise in the industry. And this is especially attractive to young people because analytics is a very fascinating field to work in. It's constantly challenging and it's very multidisciplinary in nature. It has a very strong business component because actually with analytics you want to solve business problems, be it marketing, risk management, or fraud problems. Next to that, it typically is going to have a quantitative component. So you need people with strong quantitative skills, um, statistics, data mining, or hardcore analytics if you want. But besides that, it also touches other fields like legal aspects. With analytics, we can do a lot of stuff these days. So we can do so much that at some point you have to wonder, are we invading people's privacy, yes or no? So that's where the legal perspective comes in. So the fact that the field is constantly changing, that there are constantly new developments, new applications of analytics, that combined with its multidisciplinary nature makes it so attractive to young people, if you ask me. Yeah. So I look forward to uh, discover more in your book. Could you just recall us the, the exact name and where it shall be uh, released or, or uh, where we can get it? The exact title of the book is Analytics in a Big Data World, The Essential Guide to Data Science and Its Applications. It's being published by Wiley, um, but actually you can also get it on Amazon already, for example. It should be available early June, so within a couple of weeks from now. Okay, perfect. Well, thank you for this conversation and good luck with your book. I look forward to reading it. And thank I look you. forward to and the next occasion. Thank you, and I look forward to receiving any, any feedback.